Hi, I'm Tim Chivers from Red Arc Electronics. I'm the Area Sales Manager for Victoria. Today, we're going to look at installing a Smart Start SBI isolator. The Smart Start SBI battery isolator is designed to charge an auxiliary battery from your start battery while the engine is running. When the engine is off, it will separate the start battery from the auxiliary battery. That way you can run auxiliary loads from your auxiliary battery without fear of flattening your start battery. The SBI is a very simple device to install. It only requires three connections and needs no input from the user after the installation. However, there are a number of things to consider in order to get the best out of your SBI. I will also cover some other useful applications for the SBI. The SBI requires an accurate measurement of the start battery. For this reason, it should be mounted as close to the start battery as possible. In order for the internal switching mechanism to work correctly, it is important for the SBI to be mounted either horizontally or with the main terminals facing upwards. Mounting the unit upside down with the terminals facing down is not recommended. Recommended engine bay installations for installing the SBI include in front of the radiator, behind the headlight assembly, or next to the start battery. Don't mount the SBI too far from the start battery next to the engine block exhaust manifold or turbochargers as excess temperatures can reduce the life of the unit. Selecting the correct cable size is one of the most important things when installing the SBI. Specific cable size recommendations can be found in the SBI user manual. As a guide, it is recommended that both input and output power cables for the SBI 12 are at least 8 V and S. For the SBI 24, 6 B and S is recommended. It is important to consider that as the total length of cable increases, so should the thickness of the cable. Other cable sizes will be advised later in this presentation. Cables should be terminated only using quality connection methods. Red Arc recommend ring terminals for connection to the SBI and Anderson connectors for when disconnection is required. With a fully charged start battery and a running alternator, it's capable of supplying a large amount of current. With the SBI engaged, this current can find its way directly to a faulty, flat, or even short circuit in the auxiliary battery. For this reason, it is important to protect your wiring by selecting a good quality fuse and fuse holder. Installing a fuse with a correct rating will ensure that the current passed during normal operation is allowed, but will blow the fuse should a fault occur. It is important to decide your use of the SBI and therefore how much current is required to pass through the system. For a standard SBI installation, a 60 amp fuse is recommended, whereas installations with a jump start assist connection would require a 100 amp fuse or larger. A good quality fuse and fuse holder will also ensure a good electrical connection between the fuse and the cabling on either side. A poor connection means a high resistance and excess heat is generated. The heat generated can get to a point where the fuse blows prematurely or the fuse holder melts and the connection is lost. If the SBI is not turning on, always check the fuse connections first. Correct grounding for the SBI is essential. If it's not grounded properly, the SBI cannot measure the voltage properly. And if it can't measure the voltage properly, it's not going to function. It is important to ensure that the negative terminals of both the start battery, auxiliary battery, and the ground wire of the SBI are all connected together. Check the continuity of your earth connections once installed. Some vehicles, in particular utes, can have the tray not electrically connected to the chassis due to rubber mounts and paintwork. This can be an issue when installing the auxiliary in the tray. To overcome this, additional ground leads should be installed 
to electrically connect the auxiliary battery to the chassis. So as suggested, it's important that all grounds are connected properly and that these ground connections are tested. Once the unit is mounted, it should be installed in this order. One, wire the common ground for both battery negative terminals and the SBI ground wire. Two, connect the start battery positive cable to the stud on the front of the SBI unit. Ensure that the cable is of adequate size and the SBI is a maximum of two metres from the start battery. Make sure to use a good quality ring terminal to suit the eight millimetre stud and the correct cable size. Heat shrink the terminal once crimped. Three, wire the start battery positive cable to the battery positive terminal. Ensure that the cable is properly fused and that the fuse is installed as close as possible to the start battery. Four, wire the auxiliary battery positive cable to the stud on the back of the SBI unit. Ensure that the cable is of adequate size and the cable is properly fused. Make sure to use a good quality ring terminal to suit the eight millimetre stud and heat shrink the terminal once crimped. Five, wire the auxiliary battery positive cable to the auxiliary battery positive terminal. Again, ensure that the cable is properly fused and that the fuse is installed as close as possible to the auxiliary battery. And that's it, a basic SBI installation. Now let's test it by starting the vehicle. Shortly after startup, the SBI should engage. You will hear a click and the red LED will turn on. The red LED indicates that the unit is correctly engaged and both batteries are now connected together. Once you are happy the unit is turned on and is charging, turn the vehicle off. When the start battery drops to below 12.7 volts for 10 seconds, the unit will turn off. It is not uncommon that the unit will stay engaged with the red LED on for some time after the vehicle is turned off. This is normal. We can speed up the process for testing purposes by switching on the headlights. If all has gone to plan, your SBI installation is complete and everything is working properly. Now let's have a look at some other SBI applications. The SBI features a separate connection the blue wire, or override wire, will override the electronics and connect the start and the auxiliary batteries together manually. Connecting this wire through a momentary switch to the auxiliary battery will allow the unit to be turned on manually in the event that the start battery is unable to start the vehicle. This allows you to supply some charge to the start battery from the auxiliary battery in order to start the vehicle. When using this feature, it is recommended to push and hold the switch for 10 seconds, then start the vehicle with the button still held in. You can also connect this blue wire to your winch trigger wire. That way, you're connecting both batteries together so that your winch will run stronger and for an extended period. The SBI does not necessarily have to be connected to an auxiliary battery. By connecting a load directly to the auxiliary terminal of the SBI, the SBI can be used as a low voltage cutout. This is particularly useful in situations such as running a fridge in your caravan while the engine is running, to prevent the fridge flattening your start battery while the engine is off. The blue wire can also be used to have an external LED mounted on your dash. Like the internal LED on the SBI, it will indicate when the SBI is engaged. Now, every time the SBI is on, the LED on the dash will indicate that it is engaged. Simply connect the blue wire to the positive lead of a standard LED and wire the negative lead of the LED to ground with a resistor in series. Alternatively, 
purchase an LED with a resistor built in to suit your vehicle's voltage. Lastly, I'll cover some of the more common questions we get asked about the SBI. The number one question we get asked is about the red LED. It will come on when the SBI is engaged and turn off when it's disengaged. The red LED may stay on for a period of time after the vehicle is turned off. This is due to the SBI operating on voltage levels and can take some time for the voltage level to drop enough to turn the SBI off. A new fully charged battery may take hours to drop to this level. Frequently, we get asked if the red LED indicates a fault. The LED indicates normal operation. However, if the LED is flashing, it does indicate there is a fault. Flashing twice, then a pause, indicates that the unit has detected an excessive voltage at the start battery. Flashing three times, then a pause, indicates that the unit has detected too much difference in voltage between the contacts. This could be due to an excessive current draw. The other major question we hear is, why does my solenoid switch on and off constantly? There are two main reasons for this occurring. Firstly, a depleted auxiliary battery, once connected to the system, can pull the voltage below the turn-off threshold and switch the SBI off. At this point, the auxiliary battery is now disconnected and the voltage rises again until it reaches the SBI turn-on voltage. The cycle then starts again. This problem should rectify itself given enough charge time, but a good charge with a 240 volt battery charger is recommended. It could also indicate an issue with your alternator. Secondly, if the cabling used is insufficient, it can cause a voltage drop, switching the SBI off. Once it is disconnected, the voltage can rise again, switching the SBI on, where the cycle starts again. To rectify this, reinstall with thicker wiring. Now with your SBI installed and working perfectly, your start battery is safe. You won't have to think about disconnecting your auxiliary battery anymore. The Smart Start SBI will do all the thinking for you.